Hey guys, today I'm a happy geek because I got the chance to meet Alexei Moskalenko. I was invited by Dominique from Dragonflyers Canada in a Google Hangout and together we discussed with Alexei about the revolution of brushless gimbals from the last year. And uh, besides that, as you probably know, there is a new AlexMOS firmware and I got the chance to install it and uh, using the tips I got from uh, Alexei in person, I was able to configure my gimbal and uh, made it achieve incredible performance. I'm going to walk you through the most important changes in the 2.4 firmware and I'm going to save the one that excited me the most at last. Um, first of all, this is my gimbal. It is now in follow me mode. I have activated to follow all my movements. And the big change in 2.4 is the fact that the follow mode has been uh, uh, rewritten. And one of the nice things is the fact that it now, now takes into account the acceleration limiter setting. So you can set a maximum acceleration speed and thus prevent any rapid unwanted movements. So you can see how nice and smooth it works in follow me mode. Second, for this I'm going to switch to lock mode. So lock mode means the gimbal will stop following me. It is now in lock mode. You can see that it is not following anymore. One important change here is the way the gimbal is recovering when missing some poles, when missing some, uh, some steps. I'm going to force the gimbal to miss steps and you can see how, how it, uh, it recovers from this. This is far better than before. Whenever a motor loses a step, the Alexmos firmer automatically reduces speeds and uh, increases power in order for the recovery to be as fast and as smooth as possible. Also, the PIDs were reworked by Alexei and you will notice as soon as you install 2.4 that the PIDs work a little bit different than before, especially the eye setting. The eye is now affecting stability much more than, uh, than before and you must be Careful not to set it too high. According to the manual instructions, you should try to get as big as possible eye setting without having uh, jittering. The reason I, uh, I told you I'm, I am very happy is the following. I switched it a little bit to follow mode so I can show you uh, the gimbal from this side. And I'm going to switch back to lock mode now. I'm going to show you something that really impresses me in this new firmware. Previously, whenever the gimbal, the frame on which the gimbal is attached to, was more than 30, 40 degrees, the gimbal was starting to shake. Now, it doesn't anymore. You can see that I can even oops, reverse it upside down and it still works just as as nice. If you see a little bit of shake is because uh, my hands are tired and I cannot uh, hold it properly anymore. And also in reverse. So there is a new setting in the new firmware. It is a setting that you may find in, uh, in the follow me mode and it is called estimate frame angles from motor poles. So the new firmware is capable of estimating the, the position, the angles of the frame based on the positions of the motors. And this allows it to be stable in all frame angles. So this is in fact uh, something that was annoying me uh, greatly because whenever we were flying a little bit more aggressively and our frame was in 45 degrees or even more, the gimbal would start to, to shake and that was, uh, that was quite annoying. Um, I'm going to cut power 
and show you something before, before we finish. Many people don't know how to balance a gimbal on the pan axis, on the third axis. Let me remove these wires. These wires are temporary, so ignore them. We have a slip ring here, and we're going to pass everything through the slip ring. So, back to balancing of the pan. The, way you, the easiest way to balance your pan is by rotating your gimbal like this, and balance it as if it were the, I don't know, roll or tilt axe. In whatever position you put it, it must stay like this, just like with the, the other axis. So this is all you have to do in order to balance your pen, to, to rotate it like this and to, of course, adjust it until it's balanced. balanced. Normally you should be able to adjust it from, from two sides. First of all, you should be able to move the gimbal forward or backwards from this boom. Most of the gimbals have a, a, a boom here. And assuming that you have more weight on a side than you have on the other side, then you also have to, to balance it left-right. And in order to do so, you should normally be able to rotate the entire cage from this vertical boom here to rotate it in order to, to balance it uh, left, right on the pan axis. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to quickly unmount the gimbal from these handles. And show to you how easily you can mount such a gimbal on your airframe. So I just unscrewed these four bolts. Normally you would have, have someone with you to help, to, to hold the gimbal for you, but you can see how, uh, how easy it can, uh, it can be done. I should also hook up some cables in order to have a video signal and power to my gimbal. And by using a uh, slip ring, this gimbal is entirely free to move in any direction on the, the pan axis. This is it. I hope you find it uh, informative and uh, we're gonna post all our uh, PID settings and also the PID settings that Alexei gave us we're gonna post them on, uh, on our Facebook page and we're gonna place a link somewhere on the description of this movie for you to be able to to get the PIDs if you need them.